Hello, I'm Minister Michelle Wilson. Thank you for tuning in for another segment of Begin Anew, where my foundational scriptures found in Lamentations 3, verses 22 through 23. His compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I praise God for this opportunity to have with me today Brother Kenneth Watkins. Brother Kenneth Watkins is a cancer survivor. We're claiming the victory for him. Brother Watkins, if you will, just begin by sharing with our viewing audience. It started out okay, mm -hmm. with a, uh, I had kidney cancer, which I thought was, uh, at, at first I thought I had a kidney stone. It was in November, October of, uh, I did a wedding one night at this guy's house. It was only, only it, was, it, was, it was him and his fiance and the minister. And I was a photographer slash uh, witness. Okay. <laughs> and so after the wedding was over, the, the minister left and uh, we just sat around and we were watching pictures mm -hmm. that I had taken. We went through the pictures. And uh, the next morning, it looked like I saw a stone pass, a small stone. And I was thinking, I might have kidney stones. So I, I, and I had heard about kidney stones. I said, I said, let me go and check this out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I went to a urologist and he checked me and wanted me to go to the hospital next door and have an x-ray. Well, he said that uh, I didn't have kidney stone. Mm -hmm. I had kidney cancer. Mm -hmm. And what year was this? Brother? This was in 19, uh, 2005. 2005. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, that really, you know, those three words, mm -hmm. you have cancer. I mean, you talk about devastating. Right. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. I had an operation, they removed my left kidney. Okay. It went to my, both my lungs. And for a while I was coughing. Now I cough every once in a while. Praise God, mm -hmm. praise God, praise God. So I'm thankful for that. Praise God, okay. So this was maybe two or three years after the... They were the sort of, problem. sort of close, close together. And, uh, and I had bone cancer in my hip. And my doctor said, it's the one that you're walking. Oh, it's as much bone as you've lost. That's a miracle in and of itself. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, so from there, I uh, started taking chemo and radiation. And uh, then they discovered I had cancer in my left eye. Mm -hmm. And so they operated on it and I lost vision. I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the doctor told me one day that I was doing fine. Mm -hmm come back in three months. Okay. I went back in three months. He said, we're going to have to go into emergency mode. I said, what? He said, emergency. He said, we got to get started on you right away. I said, I thought I was doing so well. You told me to come back in three months. Mm -hmm. He said, no, you're not doing well at all. So my wife said, that's it. We're going to Chicago. So. I thank God for wisdom and for your wife, Dorothy, right? Your wife, Dorothy, which I've known for a number of years also, for you all's wisdom to seek further care because I realize that sometimes patients will develop dependencies with doctors mm -hmm. and they will be hesitant to make that change. So when you know, she suggested that, and you all came together, Lord, opened that door, provided opportunity. I praise God for that. 
So the center is the Cancer Center in Chicago. In Chicago. It, it actually, it's in Zion, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago. Okay. Mm -hmm. though, that's the one that they advertise on TV, right? right? That's correct. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise God. And those are the most loving people I've ever come in contact with. Oh, I mean, if, if you ever, which I, God forbid, you know, get that disease. Mm -hmm. Contact the Cancer Center of America. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, they, they uh, treat you like you were family. Oh, that's beautiful. And, and my doctor, every time he uh, examines me, mm -hmm. well, is there anything else I can do for you? Oh. I said, <laughs> pray for me. That's He's right. what I do it every day. That's good. That's good. And people are so nice. Mm -hmm. It takes special people to be caregivers because one of the worst things you can do is to mistreat somebody right. when they are down at their worst. Right. It takes a very cruel person to do that. Mm -hmm. And we went to Chicago. My first day up there, I had a, a seizure. Mm -hmm. And they, that night I woke up, guys were standing around my bed with the gurney and they were going to take me to the hospital. I woke up, I said, what's going on? Yeah. We got to take you to the hospital. You have, you have a, you had a seizure. And so I stayed in that hospital about a week before they released me. Mm -hmm. And I went back to the cancer hospital. And uh, they started working on me. I stayed there 15 days. That was my first uh, stay at the cancer clinic in Chicago. And after that, I've only stayed two days each time. Praise God. And so I've been doing pretty well. Praise God. Except for uh, last November, mm -hmm. during the time of Hurricane Sandy. Okay. okay. I flew up for my, my monthly uh, consultation with the doctor, mm -hmm. and uh, I got, I had to stay up there, and I had a doctor's appointment in Memphis, mm -hmm. and he was giving me injections in my, in this eye, after they had found a, a tumor in this eye. I told the doctor, that's my last eye, we need to do something, you know, he said, it's a fast, gro fast growing tumor, mm -hmm. and I said, well, I'm a photographer, so I need my eyes real bad. It's hard for me to compose pictures if I don't have my sight. Mm -hmm. He said, we're going to do everything we can for you. Praise God. And Praise they were God. giving me injections in my eye. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine getting a needle stuck in your eye? You mean just directly into it, like through here? Uh, yeah. Oh, no, I can't imagine it. It was, it was mm -hmm. devastating. Mm -hmm. I had three shots. Well, anyway, during the Hurricane Sandy, uh, episode. I flew up there and it was a bumpy ride going to Chicago. And I was supposed to come back that afternoon. Mm -hmm. Well, before I could get on the plane, uh, American Airlines called me and said that my, my flight had been canceled for that day and I had to be back in Memphis to have my injection, mm -hmm. which I was dreading. Fine. But uh, I couldn't make it. So when I got back home, I called the doctor in Memphis and asked them if I could reschedule. This is in November. Mm -hmm. asked, me, asked them if I could reschedule my uh, injection mm -hmm. for a few days. Or could I get there? She said, the soonest you could see him would be January the 4th. And this was in November. Wow. I said, well, I'd be blind by then. She said, well, I'm sorry, you can't see the doctor, so the 4th of January. And that's when I went on the 4th. My eye had, I had gone to Chicago, mm -hmm. and my eye had cleared up. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And uh, so when I did finally get to see the doctor, he said, look like we have a miracle here. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> he said, uh, uh, it looks like your your uh, tumor has disappeared. Praise God. And so 
he showed me the picture of, of the tumor when it was first discovered. Mm -hmm. And then he showed me the carrot picture as of that day, as of January the 4th. Mm -hmm. And he said, look like it's gone. It's gone. So a few days ago, I went back. He said, come back in three months. I went back after three months and uh, he took a picture of it again. He said, that tumor's gone. He said, all you have to do, all, all, of, all you have is, is scarring that the tumor had left. Praise God. Well, um, you mentioned not being able to make that appointment right. in November, and then January, God had healed it. So that's what I call a divine delay. Right. A divine delay. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. Definitely. 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 God is good. God is good. So all of this, we're looking at a period of about eight years, aren't we? You said yeah, it started in eight right. years? Mm -hmm. How long have you been a photographer? I've been taking pictures since I was 10. I got my first camera in 1960 for my birthday. Uh -huh. And uh, I've been shooting ever since. And so I think that's my calling, taking pictures mm -hmm. and doing videos and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, because you are preserving memories. Yeah. As a matter of fact, that's my, uh, my uh, license plate, memory maker. Praise God. How I know that? <laughs> How do I know that? <laughs> It's wonderful. That's a wonderful gift, and God sustained you so that you could continue. And it's all to His glory, and giving Him the glory. Right. Well, you know, we had talked, Brother Kenneth, and you had mentioned the eye and how it cannot be duplicated. Right. And can you mind sharing that with the okay. audience? Because that, you know, sure later after I heard something on TV about it. God knew what he was doing Praise when God. he put us together. We were perfectly made. Praise God. And Praise especially God. one thing that cannot be duplicated. Ooh, bless that's Jesus. your eye. Mm. And you can buy the finest camera. I think a Hasselblad will run you about $60,000. These cameras can't take a picture as good as your eyesight. Mm. It, it can duplicate the vision, mm -hmm. but it's not as good as your eyesight. That's why you have people, mostly optometrists, mm -hmm. just about every optometrist believes in God. You can't tell them there's no God. Because for him to make something like this, when you, you, you can focus in, you see that this button on the wall, and you can zoom right in to it, and you're looking at it, and you see at the surrounding of that button, but you're focused on that button. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And so it's the same way with, with the camera. You can get a good camera, and uh, I can focus on you. Mm -hmm. I can still see everything behind you, mm -hmm. but it will be blurred. Mm -hmm. But you're clear. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. Uh, God did it. Amen. Through this whole process, you've already have mentioned prayer. Have, what have been your other strengths? I guess because I stay busy. I okay. stay busy quite a bit. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I shoot a few commercials and, and uh, I take a lot of pictures. Praise God. Uh, uh, one, one of my doctors, I went up there for a visit. I think it was around September. My doctor was gone out of, out of the country for vacation. Mm -hmm. And so this substitute doctor, she looked at me and examined, and she said, why do you keep coming here? I said, because she tell me to come every month. Mm -hmm. But she was being a little sarcastic. She, she really, she knows I'm out, you know, I'm, I have my issues. Mm -hmm. But uh, she said it sarcastically. Why do you keep coming? Because she said, I look so well. I don't look like I'm sick. You know? Praise God, you don't. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. And that's just a part of God sustaining you. Yes. Yeah. 
Praise God. I look at it that way, and I, I thank Him every day for uh, His sustaining me as, as as good as I am. Praise God. He, I mean, it's 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 beautiful for me to say I had had. I say had. This is the way I look at it. All over my body, my brains, my eyes, mm -hmm. my lungs, mm -hmm. my hip, my kidney, my Lord. all that. My Lord Jesus. And I'm still pushing. Praise God. <laughs> Ooh. Praise God. That is a walking miracle. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. That's beautiful. There is an importance of a song. The scripture talks about your songs, you know. When the children of Israel were captured, they were being taunted, saying, where are those songs of Zion you used to sing? Yeah. And they would say, how can we sing in a strange land? Mm -hmm. But they got their song back. And we know that songs are scripture put right. to words. Mm -hmm. So, Brother Kenneth, what song is most clear and dear to your heart that you find so much strength in? I would suppose no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Bless you, Lord. Isaiah 54, 17. I have sung it so much here at church that I told my sister is the pianist. And I told her, I said, you need to give me another song to sing. Because a lot of people will think this is the only song I know. Because <laughs> I've, I've sung it, I don't know how many times, so it's gotten to the point where people hear that song, they think of me. Praise God, yeah. praise God. That's his song. Praise yeah, God. Well, I, I, I'll take that. Praise you know, God. I'll accept it. Praise God. As I recall, that scripture, no weapon that's formed against thee shall prosper. Right. And every tongue shall rise against thee in judgment. Thou shalt condemn. This is a heritage of the service of the Lord, and the righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Amen. So, weapons are going to be formed. Yes. But are they going to succeed? No. No. Because he said, he didn't say some weapons. He no said no weapons. No weapons. The Lord speaks in absolute terms because He is God. He is That's sovereign. Right. He can do that. Right. But we cannot. But right. we can stand on His word and claim that absolute sovereignty. Right. Praise God. Praise God. We just thank God for that testimony, Brother Kenna. And how the Lord is working healing and powers in it through you through your sister Harry, who I interviewed earlier. She's also a walking miracle, and the odds of a family having siblings that are both walking miracles like that are just, I'm sure very, very rare. But if you knew Miss Frances, <laughs> a beautiful lady of God, you know, a husband, you can understand how God is just showing that favor and just just keeping up her, her prayers alive and just passing it down through the children and how the Lord is just honoring those things. In my foundational scripture, we serve a compassionate and faithful Father. Mm -hmm. Compassionate. He feels what we feel. When Jesus came to earth, he suffered as man, although he was God. Everything that we could experience, he could, he experienced. And that's the reason why he's able to intercede for us now. Because he knows that's his compassion. Absolutely nothing we go through is uh, out of his control. Another scripture even says that God keeps our tears in a vow. No tear that we shed, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Goes without notice, he collects them. <laughs> oh, that's compassion, faithfulness. Yeah. And Praise one, God. One thing I like to do. Praise God. Yeah. I, I like to tell people, 
things about what I've gone through to give them encouragement. Amen. Because see, that's what the doctor said. That's not what God said. So, I go by him. That's right. Stand on his word. Yeah, stand on his word. Stand on his word. I don't even think about that. Now I know it's coming. It's coming to everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, 10 out of 10 people die. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, I don't look, you know, we have Relay for Life here. Uh -huh. And each year, we receive a medal mm -hmm. to go around your neck, you know. Okay. And uh, like I told them, uh, last week when we had Relay for Life, I said, well, this is another one to go into my collection. Praise God. Praise God. I'm looking to get 20 more. Praise God. Praise God. I'm 62 years old. Praise God. Praise God. And I'm looking to get 20 more. That's all right. And then after that, I'll get 20 more. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The things that I'm gathering from our conversation is keeping busy, not dwelling on right. the negative. I've never really heard it said that way. No. But you sharing and opening that up is going to strengthen so many of our viewers. I, I carry on. I, I do everything I've ever done. Mm. I mow my yard, watch, watch my vehicles, and, you know, and I still take pictures. Praise God. And I love uh, encouraging people. Praise God. To you know, I'm still here. You stay here with me. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And we'll just encourage each other. Praise God. So God has a reason. He does for what he does or what he allows. Mm. And uh, I assume that me getting this dreadful disease was something God wanted to do to show his strength and to uh, show others, you know, because God does things the way he does things is like nobody but me. Amen. You have to give him glory. Yeah, it is. You have to, yeah. And I like his sense of humor too. I laugh a lot, you know, because I, I, God, man, you are so funny. He, you know, <laughs> he does things, you know, and he wants us to be happy. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And he wants us to laugh like I'm, I'm sure he does. Right. No, because if, if he didn't, if he didn't laugh, why would he give us the ability to laugh and see things that are funny? Right. So he's got a sense of humor. Right. Just, just he's not the guy that wants to throw uh, lightning bolts at us and stuff like that. Right. He wants us to be wants us to be happy right. and enjoy our life. Amen. And bring Amen. others with us. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. That is beautiful. Very, very beautiful insight. Very timely. Because I know scripture also mentions laughter being the best medicine. Yeah, it's true. And sometimes people say, I laugh to keep from crying. Yeah. And I believe those people get their healing and their uplift. Yeah. By focusing on the positive. Not so much on themselves, but continue to give. Right. So when given, we we'll receive. Right. I love so, to give. Somebody asked me, if you were to win a lottery, a publisher's clearinghouse came and knocked on your door. And that's what, my limousine driver asked me that. I was on, on my way to Chicago. And I said, I'd probably give most of the money away. And I would. I would do, you know, I, I uh, have enough to sustain, keep enough to sustain my family mm -hmm. and myself, mm -hmm. you know, and the rest of it, I give it away. But 
I, I give it away to a point where I might give away scholarships. Praise God. And then at such a low interest rate, because you can give this money back so somebody else can go behind keep you. Keep the gift going. Right, keep it going. So your last report, what did they tell you? Everything was perfect. God. But they said I'm not out the woods, but I think I am. Um, but they said blood pressure was good. Amen. All the all of, of the vitals were perfect. God. They're going to do the um, MRI um, when I go back, and uh, they they're going to see how well I'm uh, doing with the chemo that they're get provided me with um, what uh, last MRI I had they said that uh, uh, all all my tumors but three had strong I just pray God's provision his divine now complete healing and wholeness for you his strength, Thank you. his encouragement, and to just continue to keep you in his loving arms. And we just thank God for you, for your testimony, for your example. And we're blessed because of you. Thank you. Praise God. I know God is happy too. Praise God. And audience, I just want to re remind you all, begin each day of me. Keep pressing forward and appreciate things. Take time to observe, take time to love, take time to encourage others. And most of all, don't forget God, because He is a compassionate, and faithful Father. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen.